The next step in our data science introduction and our definition of data science is to talk about the data science pathway. So I like to think of this as when you're working on a major project, you got to do one step at a time to get from here to there. In data science, you can take the various steps and can put them into a couple of general categories. First, there are the steps that are involved planning. Second, there's the data prep. Third, there's the actual modeling of the data. And fourth, there's the follow up. And there are several steps within each of these. I'll explain each of them briefly. First, let's talk about planning. The first thing you need to do is you need to define the goals of your project so you know how to use your resources well, and also so you know when you're done. Second, you need to organize your resources. So you might have data from several different sources, you might have different software packages, you might have different people, which gets us to the third one, you need to coordinate the people so they can work together productively. If you're doing a handoff, it needs to be clear who's going to do what, and how their work is going to go together. And then really to state the obvious, you need to schedule the project so things can move along smoothly, and you can finish in a reasonable amount of time. Next is the data prep, where you're taking like food prep and getting the raw ingredients ready. First, of course, is you need to get the data and it can come from many different sources and be in many different formats. You need to clean the data. And the sad thing is this tends to be a very large part of any data science project. And that's because you're bringing in unusual data from a lot of different places. You also want to explore the data. That is really see what it looks like, how many people are in each group, what the shape of the distributions are like, what's associated with what. And you may need to refine the data. And that means choosing variables to include choosing cases to include or exclude making any transformations to the data you need to do. And of course, these steps kind of can bounce back and forth from one to the other. The third group is modeling or statistical modeling. This is where you actually want to create the statistical model. So for instance, you might do a regression analysis, or you might do a neural network. But whatever you do, once you create your model, you have to validate the model. You might do that with a uh, holdout validation, you might do it really with a very small replication, if you can. You also need to evaluate the model. So once you know that the model is accurate, what does it actually mean? And how much does it tell you? And then finally, you need to refine the model. So for instance, there may be variables you want to throw out, there may be additional ones you want to include, you may want to again, transform some of the data, you may want to get it so it's easier to interpret and apply. And that gets us to the last part of the data science pathway. And that's follow up. And once you've created your model, you need to present the model, because it's usually work that's being done for a client could be in house could be a third party. But you need to take the insights that you got and share them in a meaningful way with other people. You also need to deploy the model, it's usually being done in order to accomplish something. So for instance, if you're working with an e commerce site, you may be developing a recommendation engine that says people who bought this and this might buy this, you need to actually stick it on the website and see if it works the way you expected it to. Then you need to revisit the model, because a lot of times the data that you worked on is not necessarily all of the data. And things can change when you get out in the real world, or things just change over time. And so you have to see how well your model is working. And then just to be thorough, you need to archive the assets, document what you have and make it possible for you or for others to repeat the analysis or develop off of it in the future. So those are the general steps of what I consider the data science pathway. And in some what we get from this is three things. First, data science isn't just a technical field, it's not just coding things like planning and presenting and implementing are just as important. Also contextual skills, knowing how it works in a particular field, knowing how it will be implemented, those skills matter as well. And then as you got from this whole thing, there's a lot of things to do. And if you go one step at a time, there'll be less backtracking, and you'll ultimately be more productive in your data science projects. We'll continue our definition of data science by looking at the roles that are involved in data science, the way that different people can contribute to it. 
That's because it tends to be a collaborative thing and it's nice to be able to say that we're all together working together towards a single goal. So let's talk about some of the roles involved in data science and how they contribute to the projects. First off, let's take a look at engineers. These are people who focus on the backend hardware, for instance, the servers and the software that runs them. This is what makes data science possible. And it includes people like developers, software developers, or database administrators. And they provide the foundation for the rest of the work. Next, you can also have people who are big data specialists. These are people who focus on computer science and mathematics, and they may do machine learning algorithms as a way of processing very large amounts of data. And they often create what are called data products. So a thing that tells you what restaurant to go to, or that says you might know these friends or provides ways of linking up photos. Those are data products, and those often involve a huge amount of very technical work behind them. There are also researchers. These are people who focus on domain specific research. So for instance, physics or genetics or whatever. And these people tend to have very strong statistics, and they can use some of the procedures and some of the data that comes from the other people like the big data researchers, but they focus on these specific questions. Also, in the data science realm, you'll find analysts. These are people who focus on the day to day tasks of running a business. So for instance, they might do web analytics like Google Analytics, or they might pull data from a SQL uh, database. And this information is very important and good for business. And so analysts are key to the day to day functioning of business. But you know, they may not exactly be data science proper, because most of the data they're, they're working with is going to be pretty structured. Nevertheless, they play a critical role in business in general. And then speaking of business, you have the actual business people, the men and women who organize and run businesses. These people need to be able to frame business relevant questions that can be answered with the data. Also, the business person manages the project and the efforts and the resources of others. And while they may not actually be doing the coding, they must speak data, they must know how the data works, what it can answer, and how to implement it. You can also have entrepreneurs. So you might have, for instance, a data startup, they're starting their own little social network or their own little uh, web search platform. An entrepreneur needs data and business skills. And truthfully, they have to be creative at every step along the way, usually because they're doing it all themselves at a smaller scale. Then we have in data science, something known as the full stack unicorn. And this is a person who can do everything at an expert level. And they're called a unicorn because truthfully, they may not actually exist. I'll have more to say about that later. But for right now, we can sum up what we got out of this video by three things. Number one, data science is diverse. There's a lot of different people who go into it. And they have different goals for their work. And they bring in different skills and different experiences and different approaches. Also, they tend to work in very different contexts. An entrepreneur works in a very different place from a business manager works in a very different place from an academic researcher. But all of them are connected in some way to data science and make it a richer field. The last thing I want to say in data science and introduction where I'm trying to define data science is to talk about teams in data science. The idea here is that data science has many different tools and different people are going to be experts in each one of them. Now, you have, for instance, coding and you have statistics. Also, you have fields like design or business and management that are involved. And the question, of course, is who can do all of it? Who's able to do all of these things at the level that we need? Well, that's where we get this saying. I've mentioned it before. It's the unicorn. And just like in ancient history, the unicorn is a mythical creature with magical abilities. In data science, it works a little differently. It is a mythical data scientist with universal abilities. The trouble is, as we know from the real world, there's really no unicorns animals. And there's really not many unicorns in data science, really, there's just people. 
And so we have to find out how we can do the projects, even though we don't have this one person who can do everything for everybody. So let's take a hypothetical case just for a moment. I'm going to give you some fictional people. Here is my fictional person, Otto, who has strong visualization skills, who has good coding, but has limited analytics or statistical ability. And if we graph his stuff out, his abilities, so here we got five things that we need to have happen. And for the project to work, they all have to happen at at least a level of eight on the zero to 10. If we take his coding ability, well, he's almost there. Statistics, not quite halfway. Graphics, yes, he can do that. And then business, yeah, all right, and project, pretty good. So what you can see here is in only one of these five areas is auto sufficient on his own. On the other hand, let's pair him up with somebody else. Let's take a look at Lucy. And Lucy has strong business training, has good tech skills, but has limited graphics. And so if we get her profile on the same thing that we saw, there's coding, pretty good. Statistics, pretty good. Graphics, eh, not so much. Business, good. And projects, okay. Now the important thing here is that we can make a team. So let's take our two fictional people, Otto and Lucy, and we can put together their abilities. Now I actually have to change the scale here a little bit to accommodate the both of them. But our criterion still is at eight, we need a level of eight in order to do the project competently. And if we combine them, oh, look, coding's now past eight. Statistics is past eight, graphics is way past, business way past, and then the projects there too. And so when we combine their skills, we are able to get the level that we need for everything. Or to put it another way, we have now created a unicorn by team. And that makes it possible to do the data science project. So in sum, you usually can't do data science on your own. That's a very rare individual. Or more specifically, people need people. And in data science, you have the opportunity to take several people and make collective unicorns so you can get the insight that you need in your project and you can get the things done that you want. In order to get a better understanding of data science, it can be helpful to look at contrasts between data science and other fields. Probably the most informative is with big data because these two terms are actually often confused. It makes me think of situations where you have two things that are very similar, but not the same, like we have here in the Piazza San Carlo in Turin, Italy. Part of the problem stems from the fact that data science and big data both have Venn diagrams associated with them. So for instance, Venn number one for data science is something we've seen already. We have three circles. And we have coding and we have math and we have some domain expertise that put together get data science. On the other hand, Venn diagram number two is for big data. It also has three circles. And we have the high volume of data, the rapid velocity of data and the extreme variety of data. Take those three V's together, you get big data. Now, we can also combine these two if we want in a third Venn diagram, we call big data and data science. This time it's just two circles with big data on the left and data science on the right. And the intersection there in the middle is big data science, which actually is a real term. But if you want to do a compare and contrast, it kind of helps to look at how you can have one without the other. So let's start by looking at big data without data science. So these are situations where you may have the volume or velocity of variety data, but don't need all the tools of data science. So we're just looking at the left side of the equation right now. Now, truthfully, this only works if you have big data without all three V's. Some say you have to have the volume, velocity and variety for to count as big data. I basically say anything that doesn't fit into a standard machine is probably big data. I can think of a couple of examples here of things that might count as big data, but maybe don't count as data science. Machine learning, where you can have very large data sets and probably very complex, doesn't require much domain expertise. So that may not be data science. Word counts, where you have an enormous amount of data, and it's actually a pretty simple analysis. Again, doesn't require much sophistication in terms of quantitative skills or even domain expertise. So 
maybe, maybe not data science. On the other hand, to do any of these, you're going to need to have at least two skills. You're going to need to have the coding, and you will probably have to have some sort of quantitative skills as well. So how about data science without big data? That's the right side of this diagram. Well, to make that happen, you're probably talking about data with just one of the three V's from big data. So either volume or velocity or variety, but singly. So for instance, genetics data, you have a huge amount of data. And it comes in a very set structure, and it tends to come in at once. So you got a lot of volume. And it's a very challenging thing to work with, you have to use data science, but it may or may not count as big data. Similarly, streaming sensor data, where you have data coming in very quickly, but you're not necessarily saving it, you're just looking at these windows in it. That's a lot of velocity, and it's difficult to deal with it takes data science, the full skill set, but it may not require big data per se, or facial recognition where you have enormous variety in the data, because you're getting photos or videos that are coming in. Again, very difficult to deal with requires a lot of ingenuity and creativity may or may not count as big data depending on how much of a stickler you are about definitions. Now, if you want to combine the two, we can talk about big data science. And in that case, we're looking right here at the middle. This is a situation where you have volume and velocity and variety in your data. And truthfully, if you have the three of those, you are going to need the full data science skill set. you're going to need coding, and statistics and math, and you're going to have to have domain expertise, primarily because of the variety you're dealing with. But taken all together, you do have to have all of it. So in sum, here's what we get. Big data is not equal to is not identical to data science. Now there's common ground. And a lot of people who are good at big data are good at data science and vice versa. But they are conceptually distinct. On the other hand, there is the shared middle ground of big data science that unifies the two separate fields.